If you are looking for a control and monitoring system to enhance the IAT capabilities of your industrial automation system, a system that allows you to monitor and control your machinery from anywhere, IDUX web server function is the answer. This function can be used on both IDUX PLCs and touchscreens and works on any web browser, eliminating the need for additional software on your PC, smartphone, or tablet. There is no tag limit, allowing you to display as much data as you need. And best of all, it's free. Hello, I'm a technical support representative from IDUC. Today, I'll guide you through programming and designing web pages using IDUC's web server function. Let's get started. After opening the Windolder software, go to the project tab on the left side. Then, double click on the web page editor. The software will take you to the web page editor on the web browser where you can design your web page from there. For the first step, I recommend that you set up the layers and save the page before starting the programming design. Next, go to the Layers tab on the right side and open the settings. A pop-up will appear. Next, go to the General tab. I recommend that you set the layer size and position to manual setting and set the resolution to the device on which you will display the web page. Next, Check the Adjust to the Browser Width and Height when Runtime to display the web page full screen. Next, go to the Background tab. Under Background Type, select Color. You can choose the background color as desired. Then, click OK. Alternatively, if you want the background to be an image you have designed, go back to the Windolder software. Next, go to the Image folder under the Web Page Editor right-click and select Import. Next, select the image you have designed. You will see the image added under the Image folder. Next, go back to the Web Page Editor and navigate to the Layer setting. Go to the Background tab. Under Background Type, select Image Enlarge, then, Click the Settings button under Background Image, Refresh once, and select the desired image. You will see the image you designed displayed as the background of the web page. Next, go to the File menu and select Save Page as. Enter a file, name and click OK to save your web page. You can use new page or save page as to create multiple web pages for different functions. Next, go back to page 1 by going to the file menu, selecting open page and then selecting page 1. If you have multiple web page designs and do not want them to run simultaneously, you can use the method of creating multiple layers on a single page. This will allow you to switch between pages quickly without having to reload them. Go to the Layer tab and then press Add to create the desired number of layers. Then, go back to Layer O by left-clicking on it and save to finish creating the page and layers. In the next section, I will introduce how to use the control selection area, which is located on the left side of the web page editor. I will first introduce how to use the display section. The first thing I want to introduce is the label. You can drag and drop it to the layer area to use it. Labels are used to create text and display data from PLC devices on web pages. 1. I will introduce how to use labels to display text. You can edit the text and set the settings at value in the various settings sections, such as color, font, fill style, and border. Two, I will introduce how to use labels to display data from a PLC device. Copy another label by pressing Ctrl plus C, Ctrl plus V. Then, go back to the Windolder software. Then, create a simple program to move a value to DO as follows. Next, 
Next, return to the web page editor and select the desired label. Go to the text section of the link and select device tree. A pop-up will appear. Next, click the refresh button to update the device tree values. Then select DO and choose the type as Word. Finally, press OK. Next, return to the Windolder software, go to the online menu, and select simulation. The PLC will enter simulation mode. Then, return to the web page editor. Next, go to the file menu and select save page. Then, go to the file menu again and select run by viewer. The web page you created will then appear. You will see that the labels we created can now be linked to the PLC's devices. Next, return to Windolder and turn on MO. By pressing enter, you will see that the value 1234 has been moved to DO. Return to the web page editor. You will see that your label displays the value 1234. You can enter full screen mode by pressing the expand button in the bottom right corner. To exit full screen mode, press the ESC key. Next, close viewer mode and return to editor mode. 3. I will introduce how to configure other label types. In addition to the standard type, copy the label and double click it to open the pop-up property. I will only give you a basic introduction. If you need more information, you can refer to the help menu. 3.1 Integer Settings When you select Integer Additional, settings will be available. You can try configuring the settings as I have demonstrated, or press Help for more details. Then, try running the viewer to see the results. Three point two float setting, copy another label and then double click to enter the setting. You will be able to set the decimal places. Back to Windolder software, write a program to move float values to D two. Then, simulate the program. Then, move the values to the desired data. Switch back to the web page editor. Select your label, then navigate to the link tab and choose device tree. Press the refresh button once. Then, select device D2. Choose data type as float, and press OK. After that, run the viewer to test the display. Three point three methods for displaying strings on a web page. Please stop the simulation. Next, write a program to move the string value to D ten. Then run the simulation program and move the string to D10. Next, copy another label and select device D10. Select the data type as string and then press OK. Next, double click to open the settings window you can directly select standard to display the string and then press ok next copy two more labels 
and set it as decoration. You will be able to add effects to your text. For the other label, try selecting scroll text. After that, try running it with the viewer to see the results. Next, I will show you how to use image. Simply drag and drop an image into the layer area. Then go back to the Windolder software. Right click on the image and select Symbol Factory. The Symbol Factory pop-up will open up. Select Categories on the left side and choose the desired symbol. Then select Copy as JPG and give it a name. Then, expand the preview section below. You will be able to customize your image. Select the field color mode to shaded and choose the desired color. Then, select copy as JPG and give it a name. Then, close the symbol factory. You can select your own image by right-clicking on the image and choosing Import Files. Then, select the image you have prepared. Then, return to the web page editor. Go to the Image Off option, then refresh and select the desired image. Then, copy another one. Try selecting an image that is a GIF file. Using this method, you can add images or GIF files to your web page. Next, I would like to introduce you to the usage of lamp. Drag and drop the lamp onto the layer area. The lamp will be used to indicate the working status of the device. Please select the lamp, then choose images for the image off and image on states. You can customize the text to be displayed for the text off and text on states. And you can choose the color of the text here. And you can adjust the font of the text here. And you can resize the image by dragging the points. And you can check the status by changing the value. Returning to the Windolder, let's write a program to contact M10 out M100. Next, return to the web page editor go to the link of the value field and then select device m100 next try the simulation of the plc and the run by viewer of the web page editor next i would like to introduce you to the usage of multi-stage lamp please drag and drop it to the layer area then double-click to open the settings window. The multi-stage lamp works similarly to the lamp, but you can create more than two stages. By default, five stages are created for you, and you can add or delete stages by clicking the add or delete buttons below. You can change the text you want to display in each stage here, and you can change the background color here. And you can change the lamp color here, then scroll right and you can change the color of your text here. If you want to use your own image, you can select it from the image column. And if you want to display only the image, you can set it in the display item column. Once you have finished setting up, Press the close button to close. Next, go to the value column and try entering values for the multi-stage lamp. You will see that it can change stages according to the values you input for it. You can make it change its state according to the PLC by going to the link column, then selecting the device tree 
and then selecting the device you want. Next, I will guide you on how to use the multi-stage lamp instead of the lamp. The advantage of using the multi-stage lamp is that you don't need to add multiple images. You just need to change the color of the multi-stage lamp. Drag and drop another multi-stage lamp. Then double-click to enter the settings. Delete all stages except for stage 0 and stage 1. Then change the text on stage 1 to on. Then choose the color for stage 1 according to your preference. Then press the close button. Test by changing the value. You will see that it can function like a lamp without adding an image. You only need to change its color and link it to a bit type device to work only with states 0 and 1. Next, I would like to introduce the audio function. It is a function that allows us to play audio files directly on a web server page. First, navigate to the video tab, then click and select import files. Locate the folder where your audio files are stored. Ensure that the file type is set to all files. You will then see your audio files. Finally, import them into the software. Next, go to the web page editor and select the audio function. In the sir cc attribute, choose the audio file you previously imported. If it doesn't appear, refresh the page once. Then, go to the play section and select the desired device. In this case, I'm using M100. Next, please run a simulation. You will observe that, when the M100 is activated, your audio file will begin playing. Blower has an overcurrent value. Blower has an overcurrent value. Next, I'd like to introduce the video function. It allows you to play video files directly on a web page. Right click on the video folder and select import file. Choose your desired video file. The video file will be imported. Then, go to the web page editor and select the video function. In the SRC attribute, choose the video you want to display on the web page. Finally, go to the play section and select the desired device. In this case, I will use M100. Once the setup is complete, please run a simulation to view the output of your video. Next, I would like to introduce the tower light function. This feature allows you to visually represent the status of your machine using a tower light. Simply select a tower light and place it in your desired location. The tower light can be customized with up to five colors, with default colors being red, yellow, green, blue, and white. You can easily change these colors and enable or disable them as needed. You may verify the functionality by forcing a value of 1 to the specified value. Additionally, you can link to a PLC device to display the status from your machine here. In this example, I will utilize M100. And you have the ability to modify the background color at this point. Test it by simulating. You will be able to see the operating status of the tower light according to the value of the PLC device that you have linked. In the next section, I will introduce how to use the input section. This section will cover how to send commands from a web page to a PLC, such as button presses or entering values into the PLC device. First, I'd like to introduce you to the button function. Please select a button and then draw it. Buttons are commonly used to create various actions on a web page, such as navigating to different pages or changing layers. Next, double-click the button to open the settings pop-up window. Go to the action tab and select jump to URL. This action allows you to open other websites when you click the button. In this example, I'll copy the URL of the IDIC website and paste it into the URL field. Then, select Open URL in a new window to open it in a new tab. Finally, click OK and go to the text property on the right to give the button a name. Next, 
Copy the button again, and double click it to open the options pop-up window. I recommend using the jump to page and layer action. Then, select the page and layer you want to jump to. For example, when you click this button, it will take you to page 1 layer 1. Finally, click OK to close the pop-up window and give the button a name. Next, copy the button again. Double click it to set its properties and choose the action. Specify the link value and show it. Then, select the layer you want to display. Note that this method of changing pages can only switch layers within the same page. After that, copy the created button to layer 1 and paste it. Double click it to set its properties and select layer 0 to return to the previous page. Then click OK and rename the button. When you click the button, you can quickly switch between different layers of the web page without reloading the entire page. Next, try simulating the web page and click the first button to link to the IDIC website. You will see that a new tab will open in your web browser to display the link. Then, go back to the first web page and try clicking the second button. A new tab will open for page 1, layer 1. After that, go back to the first web page and click the third button. You will notice that the layer will change, but the web page will not reload, making your web page appear to work faster. To change the button's look, double click it to open the settings. Go to the image tab and pick the picture you want for when the button is on or off. Next, I would like to guide you on how to use the switch. Simply click and drag the switch component to your desired location. This switch will be used to input on or off values to your PLC. For initial setup, navigate to the Value in Property tab. Here, select the device tree and choose the specific device you want to control. In this example, I'll use M10 as a bit device. For the I.O. type, select Out, indicating that the command will be sent. From the web page to the PLC, you can customize the button's appearance under Image On or Off. For this example, I'll use the default image. If you prefer a different image, you can import it. As shown in my previous instructions, to customize the text displayed on the button, use the Text On or Off field. You can modify the text color, font, and font size using the corresponding settings. Next. Let's test it by running a simulation using the program we created earlier. When you activate the switch M10, it will output to M100 and control the device linked to M100 in a previous step. Go back to the web page and try clicking the switch you just created. You'll notice that M100 will remain active as long as it's switched on. This is because the switch operates as a toggle switch. You need to click it once to turn it on and click it again to turn it off. Next, let's explore some additional settings for the switch. Duplicate the switch component by copying and pasting it. Double click on the newly created switch to access its properties. 1. Confirm input using buttons. This setting adds an extra layer of confirmation. When you click the switch, a confirmation button will appear, requiring you to click it again to finalize the action. 2. Set the false after specified time. This allows you to set a timer for the switch to automatically turn off. After a certain amount of time, you can specify this time in seconds or milliseconds. For this example, I'll set it to 2 seconds. Next, let's test the simulation. When you click the button, a confirmation dialog will appear. Click Enter to proceed or Cancel to quit. If you click Enter, you'll see that output M100 will turn on. After 2 seconds, it will automatically turn off. This behavior is similar to a momentary switch. A momentary switch turns on when pressed and turns off when released. Next, I would like to guide you on how to use the on-delay switch. 
You can click and drag it to your desired location. Initially, I recommend returning to the Windolder software to add another device. For example, I'll use M11 and create an OR condition with M10 to control M100. After that, go back to the web page editor and navigate to on value change link the device by refreshing once and selecting device m11 double click to open the settings pop-up by default it's set to run by pressing and holding down this means the switch will activate after you press and hold it for a specified duration for instance if i set it to three seconds You'll need to hold the button for 3 seconds for M11 to turn on, and another 3 seconds for it to turn off. Next, copy the switch one more time and change the option to run by delay time. This means that when you press the button without holding it down, it will wait for the specified delay time before turning on M11. Next, let's test the simulation. For the first switch, you'll need to press and hold for 3 seconds to turn it on and another 3 seconds to turn it off. The second switch works similarly, but you don't need to hold it down. Just a single click will start a countdown based on your set time and turn it on. To turn it off, click once and it will wait for 3 seconds. Next, I would like to demonstrate how to use the text input. Simply click and drag the text input element. This will be used to input values into the PLC, such as integers, floats, or strings. Double-click on the element to configure its settings. For our first example, we'll use an integer. Here, you can set the maximum and minimum values. For instance, let's set the maximum to 100 and press Enter, then set the minimum to 0 and press Enter. Next, go to Select Confirmation Method and choose. Confirm input using button. This will display a pop-up window that requires you to confirm the input value. You can customize the color of the text. To see a preview, input a value into the value field. You can adjust the font, alignment, and fill as desired. Next, go to text and link it to the desired device. In this example, I'll choose DO, which we created earlier. For the I or O type, select I or O to both send data to the PLC and receive data from the PLC. Next, copy the text input element one more time and set its input type to float. You can adjust the number of decimal places as needed. For now, set the maximum and minimum values accordingly. Then, go to the text section and link it to the desired device. In this example, let's select D2, which is a float type. Next, let's run a simulation. Try and putting a value of your choice and press enter. The value of DO in the PLC will be updated to the value you enter. For the other text input, you can enter a float value and press enter. You'll see that the value of D2 will change accordingly. Next, copy the text input element again and double click it. Change the input type to text string multiple line. Then, click the close button. Next, Link this element to the device you created earlier. In this example, we'll use D10, which is a string type. Now, run a simulation and try entering a value into D10. For example, type A, B, C, D and press enter. You'll notice that the value A, B, C, D is sent to D10 and displayed there. Next. I'd like to introduce the slider function. This allows you to input values into your PLC device by dragging it to your desired location and double clicking to configure it. To update the value only when you release the mouse, select generate an event only when releasing the mouse. For added confirmation, enable the confirm input using buttons option. This will require you to press a button to finalize the value change. Next, go to the value tab to link to the desired plc device in this example we'll use data register do 
which is of word type. Click OK to proceed. Configure the I or O settings to allow both input and output operations. You can also set the minimum and maximum values here. Additionally, you can set the main and subscale numbers. In this example, I will set the value to 11. Lastly, scroll down to adjust the font settings. You can customize the font, font size, and color from here. Once you have completed the configuration, you can test it using the simulation function. You will be able to adjust the slider to your desired value and press enter to confirm. The value in data register DO will then update accordingly. Next, I'd like to introduce you to the drawing tool. It will be used for creating various drawings. This part will not be linked to the PLC and is purely for decorative purposes. The first tool is line, used to draw straight lines by clicking once for the starting point and again for the ending point. You can adjust the color and other properties in the property tab. Next, Polyline allows you to click point by point to create a line with multiple segments. You can customize it in the property tab. Bezier Curve is for drawing curved lines. Rectangle is for drawing rectangular shapes. Round Rectangle is for drawing rectangles with rounded corners. Polygon allows you to draw custom shapes. Ellipses for drawing circles and ellipses. Pipe allows you to draw pipes similarly to a polyline. And you can adjust its color in the property tab. Next, I'd like to introduce you to the graph and meter function. These will be used to display values from the PLC device in the form of trends, circular meters, and level meters, and other. Since page one is now full, I suggest you go to page 2 by going to file open page and selecting page 2 that you created earlier. First, go back to the PLC software and write additional program according to the example. Use a 1 second clock M8121 and a single pulse output so to. Use the random command to generate random numbers setting the minimum to O, the maximum to 100, and the destination to D100. Then, try running a simulation. You will see that the value in D100 changes randomly every second. Next, go back to the web page editor and select the trend and draw it as you desire. Then, click on the trend and you will see Lina data where we can create up to 8 plots. For this example, we will only use one. Go to link, select the device tree, then select D100 and set the data type to word. Initially, try running a simulation. You will notice the trend starting to plot values according to your device. Then, close it to return to the settings page. Next, I will show you how to configure additional settings for the trend. Double click on it and a settings pop-up will appear. In the general tab, you can set the background color. This is delay time for displaying values from the PLC device on the graph. And font size for adjusting the text size on the trend. Initially, I will demonstrate how the delay time setting works. Set the delay time to zero, then click close. Scroll right a bit and copy the trend to create another one. Set the delay time of the new trend to 2000 millisecond and run a simulation. You'll notice that the first graph updates immediately, while the second graph will have a 2 second delay before plotting data. After observing this, stop the simulation and delete the newly created graph. Then, scroll to the left and double click to open the settings. I'll set the delay time to the default 500 millisecond. 
and adjust the font size as desired. Then, go to the Line tab. Here, you can set the line label, change the line color, or add a fill color. Scroll to the right. You can adjust the line width and choose the line type from the interpolation options, Bezier Linear or Step. I will choose Step. Finally, run a simulation to see the results. You will see that the line chart will be adjusted according to your settings. Next, navigate to the Grid Lines tab. Here, you can change the color of the grid lines as desired and you can adjust the number of grid lines on the y-axis. If you increase this number, you'll see more grid lines in the graph. For now, I'll set it to 4. Moving on to the number of x-axis grid, I recommend setting it to specify the section number. This means you can specify the exact number of grid lines on the x-axis. For example, if you set it to 16, there will be 16 grid lines in the graph. I'll set it to 10 for now. And for the length of each section, in this example, it's 1 second. Then, copy the graph. And set the length to 5 seconds. Finally, run a simulation. You will notice that the graph on the left moves faster than the one on the right, because each section on the left represents 1 second while each section on the right represents 5 seconds. Next, delete the graph on the right and return to the original graph. Double-click to open the settings pop-up. Go to the Label tab. Here, you can adjust the color of the labels and the number of decimal places. I recommend using the default settings. Then, go to the Y Scaling tab. I suggest fixing the maximum and minimum values of the graph to prevent the Y axis from automatically adjusting. In this example, we'll set the maximum to 100 and the minimum to 0. If you fix these values, the graph will display the label on the right side. Once you've fixed them, there's no need to set the max value scale. Next, we can display limitation lines. In this example, I'll set it to 10%. Then, run a simulation. You'll see a red line at 10% of the upper and lower limits. This is a basic overview of using the trend feature. Next, I would like to introduce you to the circle meter. You can simply click and draw it wherever you want. It's used to display data from your PLC in a circular gauge similar to a car speedometer. First, link your desired PLC device by navigating to Link and selecting Device Tree. Choose your specific device. For this example, I'll use D100 Word. Then, double-click to configure it. Here, you can customize the background color and decimal places. In the Scale tab, you can set the maximum and minimum values. You can also adjust the colors of the main scale, subscale, and scale numbers. The number of main scales is customizable between 5 and 15, with 11 as the default. You can also adjust the subscale. And I recommend unchecking auto size scale strength and manually adjusting the size for better control. Next, in the Meter Title tab, you can give your circle meter a name. For example, if I enter Test, that text will appear on the meter. I recommend unchecking Auto Size and adjusting the size and color to your preference. Next, in the Value and Pointer tab, I recommend unchecking Auto Size and adjusting the size as needed. You can also experiment with other settings. For the Pointer style, you can choose between bar or needle. Then, try the simulation to see how your circular gauge changes based on the PLC device data. Next, I would like to introduce you to the level meter. It's commonly used to display the level of various devices. You can draw a level meter in the desired area. Let you click on the level meter. Then, go to value and link the device you want. 
For this example, I'll use D100 as word type. The level meter allows you to set high and low alarm thresholds. But in this example, we'll use the default values of 80 and 20. Double click on the meter to open its settings. In the general tab, you can choose whether to use a background and customize its color. Additionally, you can switch the graph to vertical mode to change its orientation. Please close the settings window and adjust the graph as needed. Double click to open the settings window. Here, you can adjust the grid style to show or hide grid lines. You can also customize the number of decimal places. For simple mode, the graph frame will disappear, and you can adjust the right side scale in the next tab. Next, header tab, you can choose whether you want to display the title or not. And you can switch the title to show below. You can change the title and adjust the size here as you want. And adjust the color here. And you can choose whether to display the current value or not. You can resize it here. And here, you can adjust the color and units of the displayed values. Next, the scale tab. Here you can choose whether you want the level meter to display a scale value or not. You can set maximum and minimum values and you can set the main scale value as you want. In this example, I will use the default value of 11, and you can change the color of the scale here, and the subscale number here. And you can change the color and size as you want. Next, Alarm tab, by default set alarm for level meter is checked. You can adjust the color of level meter as you want. The color will change according to the conditions you set. If it is normal, it will be this color. If it is high, it will be this color. And if it is low, it will be this color as you set. You can check show alarm limits to show limit lines in your level meter. And you can change the color here as you want. Next, you can then adjust the default and background colors of your level meter here. After you have finished setting up, you can try the simulation. You will see your level meter display the values according to the PLC device and change the color according to the values you have set. Next, I would like to introduce you to the circle graph. You can click and draw in the area you want. Circle graph is often used to display data in the form of percentage calculations. The maximum number of data that can be displayed is 10. First, please link value 1 to the D100 word type. Then you double click to open the settings window. You can choose to turn on or off legend mode to display the data set on the right as you want. For the size, if you want to adjust it yourself, uncheck it and adjust it as you want. And you can choose the color as you want. Then you can adjust the size of the label as you want. And in the auto color section, you can adjust the color. But I recommend using auto color. And you can adjust the decimal point here. Next, go to the item tab. In this example, I will only display the first five items. Please enable only items 1 to 5 and disable the rest. You will see that only 5 items will be shown, and you can customize the color of each item here. Next, go to the Title tab. Here, you can choose whether or not to display the title, customize its color, and adjust its size to your preference. Next, go to the Style tab. You can adjust the circle center mode to display a circle in the center, similar to a donut. However, I won't be using this in this example. And in value style, you can choose whether to display as a percentage or value. In this example, I'll use a percentage. Next, try running a simulation. You'll see that the circle graph will calculate your data into a percentage format and display the results as shown in this example. Next, I would like to introduce you to the trend bar graph, operation status graph, and scatter plot graph. The first one, the trend bar graph, 
allows you to draw it in your desired area. And double click to access the help function. For these three functions, I won't be demonstrating them, but I'll explain what they can do. They require the use of CSV files and integration with the real PLC. The trend bar can simultaneously plot both trend and bar graphs. With the maximum of 10 graphs at once. This function requires a CSV file, unlike the regular trend which uses real-time data. With this type, you can view historical data as the values are stored in the CSV file. It's suitable for functions that require viewing historical data. This function would be used like this. Next, we have the operation status graph. You can draw this graph in any desired area and double click to access the help function. The operation status graph can display the status of multiple machines simultaneously, such as stop or running. For instance, this part represents machine 1, 2, 3, and 4. So, you can track the operating status of multiple machines at once. For example, you can see that machine 1 was stopped from midnight to a.m. and was running from a.m. to p.m. And you can select a specific date or time range to view historical data. If you choose a specific date, a calendar pop-up will appear. Next, we have the scatter plot. Again, you can draw it and access the help menu for more information. The scatter plot displays data points based on their X and Y values, allowing you to visualize data distribution. Like the previous functions, this one also uses a CSV file, and it can display up to 2000 data points using this function. Next, I'd like to introduce you to the alignment and grouping features. To align objects, hold down the shift key and select the objects you want to align. Then, click and choose align. For example, if you select align top, all selected objects will be aligned at the top. To group objects, right click on the selected objects and choose group. This will combine the selected objects into a single unit. Next, I'd like to introduce you to the data tree and object tree, which you can find under the view menu. The data tree shows you where each data element is used in your project. You can click to see where your data is located. On the other hand, the object tree organizes objects based on their type. For instance, you'll find all HMI trends in one place. This allows you to easily modify the devices associated with these objects. For example, if you want to change the device for an HMI meter or HMI level meter, it's recommended to do so through the object tree. You can also search for specific objects in this tree. There are also other functions available, such as group functions for elements like tabs, tables, drop-down lists, and clock functions. However, we won't be covering these in detail in this tutorial. In the next section, I'd like to guide you through configuring your PLC's parameters, downloading the program, and connecting it to the actual PLC. Please navigate to the configuration menu and then select Ethernet port 1. In the first part, set the PLC's IP address. For this example, we'll use the default setting. Scroll down and you'll find the web server setting section. By default, it's enabled and use the default port as well. Next, in the user settings section, define a username and password for logging in when you access the web page. In the user web page section, use the default setting. In the options section, under redirect target, select the page you want to be the main or default web page. I recommend using an SD memory card for the web server function. Finally, uncheck the user system web page option and click OK. Next, go to the online menu and select download. In the download options, I recommend selecting automatic start after download and synchronize PLC clock with your computer. For the items to download, choose download user program and download web page and then select the CPU module SD card. Now, go to the communication setting. For this example, I'll use USB for downloading, so select USB. Finally, click OK to start downloading the program to the PLC.
Once the program has finished downloading, click the OK. Next, use a device that can open a web browser and is connected to the same network as the PLC. Enter the PLC's IP address followed by slash SD slash to access the data on the PLC's SD card. A pop-up window will appear asking for your username and password. Enter your credentials and click Sign In. The web browser will then load the web page you have designed. You can enter full screen mode by clicking the expand button in the lower right corner. Then, try entering different values as desired. The data on the actual PLC will change according to the PLC device linked to your web page. That wraps up our tutorial on web server function programming. I hope this has given you a solid understanding of how to fetch data from your PLC and send commands back to it using a web page. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tutorials and product updates. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to reach out to IDIC or your local distributor. Thanks for watching this video.